If you have been studying plants, you will know that this forest canopy is pumping oxygen into the atmosphere. This is photosynthesis. Using energy from the sun, organelles in the leaves called chloroplasts convert carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen. The oxygen exits the leaf through stomata, tiny openings in the leaf's surface. Oxygen, of course, is essential to life on Earth. Oxygen gas is colorless. We can't see it exiting from these leaves, but it is possible to detect this process. Actually see oxygen as it exits. I have isolated some water plants in this thin aquarium. A few minutes after placing it in direct sunlight, tiny bubbles start to appear on the leaves, and large bubbles start to form on the end of the stem. These are bubbles of pure oxygen. How do we know these bubbles are oxygen? They could be formed by any one of a number of colorless gases. To analyze this gas, we need to collect a sample. One method of collecting oxygen from water plants involves inverting a collector over the plants. I used a large plastic dome with a hole drilled in the top. A short plastic tube is glued in the hole. The plants I used are common water plants found in most ponds or streams. Before I put them in the aquarium, I added two tablespoons of sodium bicarbonate to the water. This increases the level of CO2. Carbon dioxide is an essential part of photosynthesis. With the plants in the aquarium, I inverted the collector over them. The collector is filled with plants and water. I had to place a loop of weights, metal washers, around the top of the collector to stop it from floating. Next, a test tube filled with water is fitted over the hose on the top of the collector. The water plants need to be in direct sunlight. If that is not possible, use artificial light. I used three 15-watt wide-spectrum fluorescent bulbs. Once the lights were turned on, it was only a few minutes until bubbles started rising in the collector. Large bubbles of gas eventually form at the top of the collector. At regular intervals, these bubbles ascend into the test tube. Wiggling the apparatus causes the bubbles to rise. Five hours after starting, we have a tube full of gas. We can now test for oxygen. The test I'm about to use is unsophisticated, but it has been used for centuries. It turns out that pure oxygen will cause a glowing wood splint to burst into flames. I've ignited a wood toothpick over a candle. After it has flamed for a few seconds, I extinguish the flame, leaving a glowing ember on the end of the toothpick. We will expose this ember to the gas in our test tube. If it bursts into flame, we have oxygen. A flame ignites, revealing the presence of oxygen. I had to use a large test tube to get consistent results. Smaller tubes apparently didn't contain enough oxygen to ignite the ember. With the smaller tubes, the ember glowed brightly for a few seconds, but didn't ignite. The large tube took between four and six hours to fill with oxygen. Oxygen was being produced at an average rate of 10 milliliters per hour. We have demonstrated that plants produce oxygen, a gas that is essential to human and other life on Earth. Without it, we would perish. For more science and technology projects and videos, visit our website, hyloroad.com.